Flexray was created in the early 2000s when a consortium of manufacturers, BMW, Daimler, Bosch, and a handful of tier ones, realized that the older communication systems inside cars simply weren't fast or stable enough for the next generation of chassis control. They needed something with real bandwidth, deterministic timing, redundancy, and rock-solid fault tolerance. In other words, something that wouldn't fall apart the moment you asked it to control the suspension and the steering and the braking in real time. The result was Flexray, a dual-channel, high-speed communication network capable of synchronized data transfer at up to 10 megabits per second. Each channel carries its own timing, and because the system is deterministic, meaning messages always land when they're supposed to, it was ideal for safety-critical systems. Like every bus system, Flexray still relies on terminating resistors to keep the signal healthy, instead of bouncing around the line. These resistors absorb the critical electrical energy at each end of the network, preventing reflections and maintaining proper voltage levels. In BMW's case, case, each adaptive damper contains one of these resistors, which means if a damper control unit goes open circuit, the entire flex ray path collapses. That's what makes fault finding so logical on these systems. Remove one resistor, you collapse communication from the PERD unit. And you'll see that in the case study that we're going to present in this video. There are still millions of vehicles out there with FlexRay. So this video is going to teach you how to diagnose FlexRay problems because it's critical that we still maintain the edge, that people are trained and they can understand how to approach these problems when they, when they appear because you will have problems with FlexRay. You will have issues with corrosion. You will have issues with channels not working and things like that. So we're going to actually use a BMW F01, a real life case study I did many, many years ago. And we're going to get into how the system works, how you can diagnose it, ultimately how you can fix it. So let's get into the video. So this car came sagging and uh, usual case. We've got leaking air bellows at the back, or at least on one side in particular. So... The systems are separated into two separate distinct components. You've got the air bellow, which leak and they can be replaced. Then you've got the EDC damper, what sits inside that, and they can be separated. However, we have got an electrical problem. A sagging airbag wouldn't really cause an electrical problem usually. It would just cause a, an error with the height of the vehicle. Um, and basically that, that would be all that you would have and you would then replace it, blah de blah But as you can see, we've got 481342 and D76, D61, well, the signal faults. And it's also saying that there's a um, the EDC unit, which is a little mini control unit on the, like a satellite control unit on the suspension, like they call them satellite control units, these EDC units. On the left, we've got an issue there where there's no comms. Does it mean we've got a flex ray fault? Well, no, not at all, because if you look at what I did here, if you actually disconnect that path, which is path five, you can actually induce a fault. Therefore, you, you're taking out the resistor on that rear damper, which still was working, by the way. We still, as you'll see in the video, we still have a good resistance value on it. So even though we've got an internal control unit failure, we still have a resistor stopping sort of signal reflection so you don't get a flex ray fault. What will happen is the port will just be switched off temporarily if there is a fault. This particular scope trace shows you what actually happens when the port is switched off. As you can see, there is no scope trace, it's just flat. And then this is obviously a good good flex ray signal on both wires. However, it's not a very good resolution. You could you could zoom in, but it's so fast um, that you know you need a much better scope. And unfortunately this particular scope didn't have such a great resolution. You'll notice on those fault calls we had no comms with not only the rear left, our faulty one, but we also had no comms with the front left. Why is that? Well, it's quite simple, really. You've got a terminating resistor in the rear left and it's paired to the front left. So you need to have both suspension systems terminating resistors intact. Otherwise, you'll lose comms on the whole line. As I said earlier, if you have no uh, resistor on either end of that particular path, path five, you're going to end up with a massive signal reflection. It's going to kill your front one as well. So essentially, just by disconnecting the rear left damper electrical connector, you've then by proxy took out the uh, 95 ohm resistor housed in the actual EDC suspension control unit 
And by doing that, you've now killed the entire path. So then you've got an open circuit on that resistor. And it's just like canvas in a sense. If you've got an open circuit, it ain't going to work, is it? So that's why when we induced that fault, we knew we had a good sort of line or good wiring in the whole of path five, either at the front of the front left or the or the rear left. It doesn't matter which. By doing that, we have no problem with it. And actually, you could get a 95 ohm resistor and manually insert it just like this. So if we take this line at the rear left damper, this is the one that we disconnected to induce the fault. Because when we do that, we then lose sort of um, a resistance on this entire line, what's connected. Number eight, of course, is the, um, the front left. And it's all connected all in this one sweep, as I'm just showing there with the mouse cursor. So once that's disconnected, that's the control unit there. Once that's actually disconnected here, it doesn't matter because then we've actually proven that we've got a line fault if it stops the number eight, which is the, uh, the front damper working because they're all connected to each other, basically. There's some internal hardware um, on that uh, unit inside the this gateway module. That gateway module is all sort of internally connected. So both dampers are physically connected. And once that connector is disconnected there, you lose that connection. And then you have a signal reflection. So therefore, that's why we have them faults, basically, on this line going to that number eight as well. So that's a good way of testing for that, really. And that's just something I wanted to show you. So we know on this car we don't have an issue with that. We have more likely an issue with the power supply or the ground, essentially. So all you need to do then is take a voltage check and check your ground. I don't need to show that because it's not rocket science. As you can see, we've got good battery support on the car. So we've got over 14 volts at the power supply from the fuse box to the EDC satellite damper control unit. So we had a good ground. We have a good power supply. So therefore, it can only really be the unit itself what's faulty since we don't have a fault on the flex rail line itself, as we've just shown in the previous part of the video. And all that remains to do, I always do it, you can use a load pro if you want to be fancy, or just get a good old allergen bulb. You know, I love my allergen bulb tests, as you know, and just make sure you isolate the circuit, make sure there's nothing still powered. And then you can essentially, um, basically just make sure that you, you plug it in um, that you've got a ground and a life present. If the bulb lights up bright, you're laughing at you because, you know, we under load, and that's a lot of load. It's way more load than what the control unit would put it under. You know, you've got no issue with that. All that is left is the flex ray, which we've already checked. So, yeah, all it can be is the control unit. But the trouble is the damper units, they're basically not really... You can get into them if you really want to, but they're, they're just bonded together, and the time it will take to pull it off and start cutting it open on the bench... It's not worth it, is it? If you're an electronics expert, maybe, but I'm not. So in this case, it was just the damper unit what was faulty. And finally, if you want to check the flex rail voltages, high and low, there'll be about that value on the high and low, depending on the bus load. Again, if you've got a closed port, you wouldn't see any voltage, would you? So there are all the ways you can check it. Of course, this video isn't going to go into flex rail messaging and stuff like that because it's way too complicated and there's loads of cool stuff online. In fact, I will put some links in the description where you can actually check out some of that reading material for yourself. It's very important. It's still in use flex ray on BMW, so it's not going away. But of course, can FD is taking place on some of the lower end, maybe not BMWs, but sort of cheaper cars, um, where it's fast enough um, for those particular sort of less fancy cars, shall we say. Well, I know we had some some uh, footage somewhere. So this is a bit of a better view of flex ray. Again, you can get it even more perfect than that. It's a bit similar to the other scope. But that gives you an idea. And this is another job I had where they'd actually put coilovers on the vehicle, but they hadn't coded out the old um, EDC system. So there we go. And again, we can see on here, we've got the same fault on path six there, flex ray fault, path six, from the central gateway module, ZGM. But we also had some height sensor problems on this one as well. And there you can see, you've got no comms with any of them because they've all been disconnected. There's the coilovers. And they just left the plug harness connectors in the receptacles, put tape on them. Now, just to show and to sort of give you an idea of how the how the resistors basically stop signal and reflection, I managed to put a 100 ohm resistor, that's all I had, in each part of the missing receptacles. So that's basically taking place of the EDC dampers, as, as, as we saw in the earlier part of the video. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the scope and see exactly what happens um, when we actually pull those resistors out. 
the image you just seen on the scope was with those resistors in, but I'm going to now pull the resistors out and I'm going to show you the situation. That's a, a good a kind of a good signal. Let's pull the resistors out and see what happens to the signal. And you'd be quite surprised. There you are. You've got a massive sort of like weird inverted sort of pattern at the front, and that's the signal reflection. You can see that sort of Y sideways Y shape there with my fingers pointing, and that's massive signal reflection. That's a good example, practical example. Now it's completely distorted. A good example of why you need those resistors. And all I did with this one was um, close the port, decoded the port, took it out, and then I was able to take it out of the vehicle order. And that job was sorted. But it's a good example of how the how important the resistors are. Well, they hope you like that. A little bit of uh, food for thought for you for FlexRay, if you ever got any problems with it. So if you want to become a member of this channel, please do. It's about a fiver a month. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to expand that fiver a month to uh, a 15 minute phone call on WhatsApp to help you with your fault finding per month. It's not much, but 15 minutes with me could work wonders. It's fiver a month. So please click the link in the description and become a member. And I will be doing more members only content. I've got a young baby, not much time. That's why my channel's a bit slow at the moment. However, I have got some more footage. I'm going to start putting together a few more explainer videos. And uh, I need to get my tools on, really. And I need to start doing some jobs on the Toyota. And let's start doing a bit of fault finding. It's winter now, though, so I'm struggling. I don't have a workshop at home. Only an unheated tin garage, which isn't much cop, is it? But if you, by, the, by the way, if you've got any footage, if you want to send it to me, you know, by all means, send me the footage. And um, I can use it and make videos from it. Until next time, thanks. And don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.